Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. Have you ever said this? I have, I have a feeling, I have a gut feeling about this situation. That's your intuition at work. Do you trust it? Have you trusted it? Have you not listened to it and maybe made some errors? We're going to talk about your intuition. Very powerful. And it can it can really move your life forward, uh, save you lots of heartache, money, and all of that too. If you listen to it, it's all about the energy. She is all about that, and a master Reiki practitioner and teacher at Inner Journey Reiki. She's back with us. Pranima Jadari joins us. Welcome. How are you doing today? I'm great, thank you, Steve. Good to be back. Great to have you back, and I'm I'm loving that we're mm -hmm. talking about this thing called intuition. Because I feel that many of us don't trust ourselves and we're missing out on so much, so many signs, so much information around us. Uh, do you feel the same way? I do. I mean, you know, I see a lot of people, uh, I talk to a lot of people and people think that this Thing called the intuition is only limited to a select few people. You know, it's only some people who can really feel that and the rest of them we have to just, but, you know, let me tell you that there are no exceptions. Every single person has this gift of intuition, every single person. And how it works is, you know, we have the five physical senses uh, which, you know, everyone uh, are aware of and use or misuse. Mm. <laughs> um, but, you know, we also, along with those five physical senses, we have nine clear senses and everybody has them to a varying degree. And it's all about practicing and honing those senses so that you start receiving that inner guide. What does intuition mean? It, it means that something that you know without putting your logical mind to it, without conscious thinking, it just comes to you. And how does it come? It comes through the clear senses. When you say the and clear senses, it's our regular senses? No, these are the hidden senses. Like, for example, you might have heard the word clairvoyance. Sure. Or, you know, clair empathy, clair sentience. So there are nine of these clair senses. And we all have them. But, you know, there is a couple of them that are very strong for us. You know, for most people, it's different. And, you know, when I started uh, diving into this years ago, I actually um, realized that my clairsentience is my strongest clairsense. And then over the years, not only it became like more refined and strong, but the other clairsenses came online and I started receiving guidance and, you know, that intuitive knowing through uh, many of the clairsenses and they work in synergy, you know, it's not like there's just one uh, coming up. You, for example, you know, if you're in a garden, right, you are visually seeing the garden with your um, eyes, right? Perhaps there is a breeze that you can feel that it's touching your skin. Uh, you can, uh, you know, smell the flowers, the fragrance of the flowers, right? So these are the five physical senses that are always in play. And it's a, a multi-sensory experience, you know, uh, but most people are not in tune with it. That's why they don't realize what is happening. And let me tell you another thing that when we are, um, you know, in, uh, in fear, that's when, if you're, if you're centered in your heart, uh, that is when that intuition comes out strongly. And when you're not centered, you know, then the ego mind, the logical mind is constantly chattering and creating self-doubt about everything. 
that you are experiencing. So it's important to set that ego mind aside and listen to that inner voice that is guiding you through the intuition. Does that make sense? Yeah. And, and do you think, Purnima, it's because if we're not grounded, we've got all this other stuff going on. So our mind and our attention, our energy puts put some of its direction on these things instead of listening clearly, almost exclusively to this thing, the intuition? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. You know, we are surrounded by so much energy and chaos and uh, distractions. And it's only when we sit in silence and tune into our heart, that's when that guidance comes through. So I'm going to pose a, a question. I don't know if this is even to be answered, but let's say you visualize a meeting with somebody, maybe work-related, and you think about it, how it's going to go. Maybe it's somebody you've never met before. Maybe you 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 talk to them, but you, you had never met them in person. And you think about how it's going to go and then you attend the meeting and it went exactly what you thought, well, good or bad, but it's almost as if you felt it, you saw it. This is what it's going to be. This is how this person's going to act or react. This is what they're going to bring to the table. This is what the what's all going to feel like. Is that your intuition and or is that manifesting? Did you manifest it to go that way because you had a thought or feeling? Now I'm going to say to you, does that make sense? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I would say both. So we, it's, it's so convoluted, Steve. <clears throat> I've experienced this many times and it's like we manifest in a, a multi-dimensional reality. It's like, we, you know, there are many versions of um, situations. So it's really, it depends on where you're vibrating at, you know. And so, yeah, it, this this whole meeting came through your intuition and gave you an idea of how it is going to be. And then once that that played in your mind, you know, it's a sign that it has already happened. Because in the quantum, everything is here and now. There's no past, there's no future. Everything is happening right now. So there are there could be multiple versions of that meeting. But then what played in your mind, it's like, okay, yeah, this is how. And so you align yourself with that. And, you know, this is also, uh, you'll find that um, when, say, for example, you have a meeting and you know some you get caught up in something and you realize oh my god i'm running late right like now you um get all like worked up about get being late for this meeting and so you start you get jump into your car and you start driving and you are stressed out about being late you will hit every single light and you will be more delayed, right? Because you are in that stress mode. Whereas if you relax and you take deep breaths and you, you can literally stop time. This has happened to me. Like I, my G, GPS showed the ETA and it was very clear that I was going to be late. But I arrived before time. Because time is an illusion, you know, Um and so it really depends on our energy and where we are vibrating and how we are feeling within us that we, you know, manifest uh, an outcome from it based on our energy. What you said about the time, I've done that before myself. And yeah, we're always running mm -hmm. on, you know, close to time or, or, or some of us run habitually a little late. But just what you said, I've I've experienced it where I've just manifested. I'm going to get there on time. I, I don't know how I'm going to get there on time. It's it, 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 I'm already running late, but I got there before schedule. 
And same thing, and we may have mentioned this before, manifesting a parking space somewhere, you know, as just your introductory mm-hmm. level of manifesting. I've done it twice, two weekends in a row, two different places. You don't find spaces at these places. It's, it, it's, you don't. And mm-hmm. last weekend I went and I'm driving there. I'm like, I manifested the space and very crowded area. Went around once, there was no space. The valet guy's looking at me like, I'm over here. Here I am, if you're ready. <laughs> $49 to park. So I was like, you know what? Mm-hmm. I'm going to go around again. One-way street, went up and around, came back. I'm sitting in the same spot where the valet would pick you up. And I'm like, one more minute. And I look over and there's two people saying goodbye, kissing goodbye. He gets in the vehicle. I wait, they want to be too pushy. Then I got out and I said, oh excuse me, are you leaving? He goes, yeah, I am. I'm like, great. Thank you very much. The best space in the entire place, like literally. Mm -hmm. And last night I went somewhere. I didn't even know where I was going. Somebody said, meet them there. I wasn't even sure where the parking was. There's no parking. And I manifested and I pulled in and I'm almost looking like another perfect space. This is the best one. Where's the Mm -hmm. sign that says I can't, there was none. And I, mm-hmm. I, I guess this is it. I, I found it. So that's my my test for this manifestation, putting it into the universe and having it support you. Um, mm-hmm. I, but I want to go back to what you said a second ago. Mm-hmm. In thinking about the meeting and how the meeting is going to go, and you said there are different versions of the meeting. What did you mean by that? It means that, you know, every there are multiple timelines. And I know this, it's a very convoluted concept, but there are multiple timelines and we have free will choice, you know, in everything that we do, we have free will choice and we make the decision of where we want, what we want to do or where we want to go. And so based on that free will choice, that per, you will, it's, it's a very subtle thing where you jump time, timelines and you align yourself with a particular outcome. And so, you know, multiple versions of it exist. Like, for example, you know, I always say that life is a journey from point A to point B. Point A being your first breath and point B being your last breath. And so how you get from point A to point B, there are many different ways. And there's no wrong way because point B is inevitable. You are going to go get to point B. So you could go like this, you could go like this, you could go like this, you know, there's so many different ways. And it's, it all depends on mm. the choices you make, the free will choices you make. And it's, you know, it's also there, you know, life is a combination of destiny and free will, but it's, it's a, it's a very complex thing to, to wrap our, you know, brain around because uh on a day-to-day basis it's hard to understand that but you know i have really um seen and in journeys and how like multiple realities exist and we can align ourselves so that uh, coming back to the intuition piece where you know when you listen to your intuition you will align yourself to the best or highest timeline that is part of your soul journey. And it does not mean that you will bypass any lessons or, you know, bypass anything. It just, it will, there will be more ease in learning that lesson because you have chosen an easier path by listening to your inner guidance. And that inner guidance is coming from your intuition. Nobody can tell you. Nobody else can tell you, but it comes from within because, you know, you, you, there's always this this tether to your oversoul that is sending guidance. Your highest self is sending guidance and where it is coming to is hard. You know, I want to share something very, very cool that happened two days ago for me. Sure. So <clears throat> I had to make a very important decision. And, you know, it's a, it's a very important decision right now for me. And I'm, uh, because it's impacting my immediate future. And so I'm like, 
really trying to listen <laughs> through my intuition and I'm using all my divination tools and really trying to listen. But then, you know, being in this situation and it, it's it's kind of like a stressful situation. So it is bringing in that logical mind and, you know, that self-doubt. And so I just, you know, sat down in silence and I cleared all that. I said, I, I literally vocalized it that I set my ego and my logical mind aside. And I sat in silence and I turned my awareness and my focus on my heart center. And then I asked my heart center to show me what a yes looks like or feels like rather, not looks like, but feels like. And as soon as I said that, it was literally like there was this opening, like this expansive feeling in my heart. And so I was tuning into that feeling. I was feeling it, you know, and then I said, okay, now show me what a no feels like. And immediately there was this tight knot that formed here in my heart center. So once I had established that, then I asked the question, what should my decision be in this situation? And I got my answer through my, like it was this feeling, the sensation. And I was like, blown away by it how our body is this tool of perception it has these multiple senses like the the physical senses the clear senses and our body is our most efficient tool to guide us you know like a lot of us have experienced where you are in a situation and immediately you start feeling these knots in your stomach you get this queasy feeling that is your intuition speaking and you know so it's our physical body is an incredible tool intuitive tool and when we start listening to the cues even like uh you know when when you have pain somewhere or discomfort discomfort is your body's way of telling you that you are out of alignment And so you tune into that discomfort or pain and say, where is this rooted? Where, And then you start um, really understanding where it is coming from. And then you are able to, you know, uh, clear it by aligning yourself uh, to Mm -hmm. what is right for you. So really, it's, it's magical to tap into this. We were given it for a reason. And part of that reason is we're still here. So before there were other things to give us answers, we had to rely on us. And when you ask for the answer in your difficult decision, was it your intuition, universe, however we want to look at it, was it giving you the sign for that moment, the yes, here's what the yes feels like, here's what the no feels like. Was it giving it to you for this reason to get this answer? Or is that your baseline for now knowing what the no and what the yes feels like? It's the baseline, but I can ask. And so since that uh, incident, I have yesterday, I experienced it again where I just wanted to play with it, you know, and see if if that sensation is still giving me answers. And it was, you know, every time I sat in silence and asked a question, a question that was, you know, I, I needed the answer to. Sure. Uh, it would always give me that that feeling of a yes or a no. So it was giving me a yes or a no for different questions. So now I know that I can use that as a tool, you know, and I'm sharing this because maybe there are listeners who might tap into this and and start receiving answers. Do, Do you think that many of us, when we, we try to feel the yes and the no, that the yes, I know for me, it's a lighter feeling, much lighter, kind of airier, uh, but many times we may say, well, I can't be it. That's just too easy. That's too easy. 
Uh, let me go for the harder answer, which seems heavier and there's more thought involved. Do you think that a lot of us blow off that yes answer because it just seems too easy? Yes, absolutely. Because it's the logical mind that creates that self-doubt that, oh, no, it can't be that easy. Yeah. And really, you know, like there are some we we can feel it in our heart that, yes, this feels so right in, in your whole whole body. It feels right, you know, and so we have to listen to it and not doubt it. Mm. And and of course, like, you know, if you doubt it and then decide to go with with the, the no and the harder way, uh you will go through that experience, but it will be a learning experience. And then hindsight, you'll be like, oh, yeah, I knew it, but I chose to do this. And oh, I yeah. could have made it easier for myself. And, you know, <laughs> so this happens a lot with a lot of us. Yeah, I can I can tell you even 25 years ago uh, where I was, where I was. I didn't ask for the answer. I was just getting a gut feeling intuition that this is not the right way to go, but I, I went that way. Um, and many times you're deep into a situation. So, you know, life in general, uh, where it's just, oh, it's just not logical for me to say no now because of all this around that's connected to it. But I know this is not the right answer. And sure enough, it wasn't the right answer, mm -hmm. but I felt it. And I, I could even in my memory, I could tell you where I was, the angle of the sun, the time, the month, the, all of that. Because I'll never forget it. Mm -hmm. But but that was now that I look back, that was my intuition saying, yeah, no, no, not this, not, not a good answer. So we need to listen to it. But I, I guess more importantly, we need to trust it. We need to trust it. We don't. Mm -hmm. We don't trust. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Yeah, trust is is a very important thing because um, you know, and and also it when you trust it, it's like your uh, your logical mind and, and your uh, intuition are are working together. You know, there's a balance in that because if the logical mind is overpowering, then you'll always question everything. But when you allow um that that intuitive uh knowing and and guidance to come through and listen to it you know and follow it you'll always see that you know you move through that experience with ease then then if you would have listened to the logical mind the final question we're just about out of time but that that challenging answer that you needed did it turn out to be the right answer or we don't know yet? We don't know yet. Um, but I, know you know, you know what, with, you know, <laughs> I know, I know that it is the right answer. Like, yeah. because it has now it's been two days and it has really sunk in and it makes total sense. Yeah. And so now I know because that logical mind will bring in that, uh, doubt and it's, it's just, uh, if you let it pass, you know, and then you go back to your intuitive uh, knowing and you know that is the right thing. Yeah. So I know it's the right thing, but, you know, it's still yet to manifest. So we'll see. Well, but I have no doubts that it is the right answer for me. I I have no doubts either. You just, you know, <laughs> you you know, we, yes. we anything we need the answer to, we already have the answer. It's, it's, mm -hmm. it's. It's right inside here. You got to listen to it. Is mm -hmm. it easy to do that? Mm -hmm. Not so much. Um, it's easy to find you. How do we locate you, Purnima? Uh, you can find me on innerjourneyreiki.com. That's my website. And, you know, you'll find all the offerings there. And you can also find me on Instagram at Purnima underscore Chaudhary. Always wonderful talking with you. Learn so much. Yeah. Validates a lot, too, for many of us. And uh, looking mm -hmm. forward next time mm -hmm. we get together. Yes, thank you so much for having me. Thank you. We'll be right back. 
Are you looking for even more of the podcasts and hosts that you love? The Podcast Business News Network is proud to announce that you now have even more ways to listen live. Check out the MyTuner Radio, Online Radio Box, and Simple Radio apps on iOS and Android, or find us online. Search for Business News Network on MyTuner-Radio.com, or search Podcast Business News Network on Streama.com and OnlineRadioBox.com slash US. Take your podcast on the go and don't miss a minute of the action. Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. For nearly 2,000 severely injured veterans, everyday life has become filled with barriers. Day-to-day simple tasks can become pretty daunting. I have to carry my chair up two flights of steps or have somebody do it for me. What scares me the most is just the falling. When I'm struggling with my house, I think, you know, to have that one great barrier just knocked down, I mean, it's... It's crucial. Home for Our Troops is a wonderful nonprofit that builds a mortgage-free, fully adaptive, handicap-accessible house, and there's no catch. It'll be our very first home that we've ever owned. This is a game changer. This is where your life begins again. We need you to join us in completing this important mission. Please visit hfotusa.org and help build homes and rebuild lives. Because of you, everything's it's going to be okay.